Hi everybody, Karen Bentley here with the Sugar-Free Advantage channel, your resource for healthy weight loss and healthy living on the sugar-free, low-carb or keto continuum. We help you find the right eating strategy and live it. Today we're going to be talking about this word, maltodextrin. It's in a lot of foods and even drinks that you're probably uh, putting in your mouth, but what the darn carn is it and is it safe? Well, let's figure it out. So for example, if you look at Splenda, Splenda is an artificial sweetener. The generic name is sucralose. If you look at the ingredients list of Splenda, and I'm gonna do that now, the very first ingredient is maltodextrin. So the food manufacturer is telling us that that's what there's the most of in this product. And um, so it's in that, and then it's in here. It's in a different artificial sweetener. It's in Equal, which is aspartame. And if you look at the ingredients list on this, it's dextrose with maltodextrin. That's the first ingredient. So again, the food manufacturer is telling us that's what's in this product. But if we look at this blend of product, which is a sugar blend, I don't know if you can see that, and we look at the ingredients list, whoa, there's no maltodextrin. It's just sugar and sucralose. So what is maltodextrin? Well, it's a filler. It's a bulking agent that food manufacturers use to beef up their products. With the case of sucralose, it's 600 times sweeter than table sugar. So only minuscule amounts are actually needed to be used as a sweetening agent. And the food manufacturer uses maltodextrin to make it look like sugar and to make it measure like sugar. In the case of equal or aspartame, they use maltodextrin to make it look like sugar, but it doesn't exactly measure like sugar. They don't put enough of it in to make it measure like sugar. But in both cases, they're using maltodextrin as a filler, a bulking agent. In this other Splenda product that we looked at, there's no maltodextrin because sugar is its own filler. No maltodextrin is needed. See the difference? Um, other reasons that food manufacturers use maltodextrin is to improve the texture. Um, it's a texturizer. It just makes foods uh, look and uh, taste even better. And uh, it's also a preservative. It extends the shelf life of products. So those are three really important reasons that a food manufacturer might want to use maltodextrin. It's a filler, it's a texturizer, and it makes the product last longer. How good is that from a food manufacturer's perspective? Um, but what is it? We still don't exactly know what it is. Uh, bottom line, it's a white, tasteless powder with no nutritional value. It's made from a starch source, and that starch source could be corn, it could be rice, it could be potatoes, and it could even be wheat. The food manufacturer doesn't have to tell us what the source of starch is, so we never know. But in any case, the starch source is hydrolyzed they use water and enzymes to remove 80% of the starch from the substance. And what you're left with is that white, powdery, no calorie substance that has still 20% starch in it. And the presence of starch is what most people object to about maltodextrin. Um, so for example, if you're eating lots of foods made with maltodextrin, it can in fact spike your blood sugar uh, because you're eating a lot of it. If you're eating a normal amount, it's not gonna be problematic for you. But if you're eating a lot, then it could be a, a blood sugar spiker. Also, it's objectionable to people on a keto diet. The presence of 20% starch is objectionable to most people on a keto diet or keto eating strategy. They don't wanna have foods with starch in it. 
And the third reason that people object to maltodextrin is because when wheat is used as the source, and that's the least likely source of starch, but when it is used, it can leave traces of gluten in the maltodextrin. And if you're gluten intolerant, or if you just want to lead a gluten-free life, then you might want to avoid maltodextrin products. Other than that, uh, most people are very able to tolerate maltodextrin. It's easily digestible. And in fact, the FDA has uh, said that it is a grass product. G-R-A-S means generally recognized as safe. Um, but if you really don't want to be eating foods with maltodextrin, or if you don't want to make foods with maltodextrin, there are two uh, substances that you can use as alternatives in your home cooking. One is guar gum, G-U-A-R gum. It's a thickener. And the other is pectin, P-E-C-T-I-N, another thickener. I personally don't prefer those two alternatives, but you might. You know, give it a whirl if you're looking for an alternative. Try it out. Um, so what else do we need to know? Bottom line, maltodextrin is okay for most people. What you want to do is uh, hold in your consciousness that it is a processed foods. These are all processed foods. Artificial sweeteners are processed foods. Sugar alcohols are processed foods. Blends are processed foods. And whether or not those foods contain maltodextrin, which is another processed food, uh, means that you need to be conscious of how much of it you're putting in your mouth. And my general guidelines for all sweetening agents is maximum of two tablespoons per day, max. Less is better. If you keep it at two tablespoons or less, you're gonna fly under the radar, you're not gonna create problems for yourself, and you're gonna be able to use this substance and enjoy it and not worry about it. So if you like this content, please smash that like button. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing to our channel. We have helpful tidbits like this all the time. Come back. I can't wait to see you again. Bye for now.